hello students so today we are going to start with the topic importance of mountains as we know mountains they are peak pointed okay so here what is the importance of that mountains mountains influence the climate of an area okay so they can control influence they can control the climate of an area the himalayas block the cold winds of central asia in winter thus modifying the winters in india so the himalayas they block okay the himalayas you can see they are too long okay they are the highest mountains they block okay they block the cold wing winds that are coming from central asia and they don't allow them to enter india okay so that's why what they are saying in winters thus modifying modifying means making minor changes in uh, the winters in india so you can say that in india the winters are not too cold okay so that we can freeze okay we are not getting that freeze the winters are not too cold it brings the monsoon rainfall these mountains they brings the mon uh, monsoon rainfalls also okay it has a variety of flora and fauna here on the mountains you can find the variety of flora and fauna flora means uh, flowers okay related to flowers fauna related to animals which is quite different from the plains and this variety is different from the plains okay the variety you uh, you can you are getting in the plain areas this variety is totally different from that okay the cooler temperatures of the mountains or uh, the type of soil and the water streams also support the growth and survival of a variety of species of plants and animals so here the temperature is cool okay in the mountains and the type of soil the water streams that is regularly flowing okay it also supports the growth and survival of variety of species of plants and animals also most rivers that originate means they arise or they you can they, uh, say the rivers that are starting in, in from the mountains become a source of water in the valleys okay they are the you can say source of water for uh, in the valleys okay so the people you can say those who are living in valleys or the valleys okay they are, in the valleys they are getting enough water from the mountains and plains downstream okay the plain areas are there there also th there is enough water they are ideal tourist destination ideal perfect tourist means the travelers are coming to visit the uh, places so this is the perfect uh, tourist destination means the station or you can say the target as well okay so it is the perfect tourist destination to visit for the travelers or for the tourists then valleys valleys are formed due to the disturbances caused by the movement of tectonic plates these valleys they are also formed due to the disturbance of tectonic plates okay when the tectonic plates they are moving to the opposite direction you can say these valleys are formed okay and the impact of natural forces like erosion and deposition and when there is effect of natural forces also you can say erosion is there okay and deposition deposition you can say that uh, like uh, we are saying like khadde are there okay so deposition is there and erosion erosion means the removing of the top layer okay so we are we can say that these type of natural forces are there at that time you can say valleys are formed due to these internal and external processes the surface of the earth becomes uneven and rippled so due to these internal that are under this earth or you can say external processes the natural ones the surface of the earth becomes uneven that is rough and rippled rippled means flow with the series of small waves okay so when it is flowing with the series of small waves some areas rise high and some areas fall into depression some areas they become high and some are in the depressions these low lying areas between two mountains or hills are called valleys so here you can see picture is also there so these low lying areas are known as valleys they are usually u shaped or v shaped so you can see that we are they are valleys are usually normally u shaped or v shaped okay so we are going to see about the now 
valleys we have done okay so we are now going to read about plateaus plateaus a plateau is an elevated land okay it is an elevated means the top top land which a more or less flat surface at the top giving the name table land maybe you all have seen table na okay it is you can say it is above from the ground level okay that table is above from the ground level so plateau is also like table okay so it is you can say above from the main surface of the land okay they may be just a few meters to 100 of meters high okay it can be few meters also and it can be hundreds of meters high also some of the famous plateaus are the deccan plateau of india the plateau of tibet and the east african plateaus in kenya tanzania and uganda okay so these are some of the plateaus now we will read about important of plateaus plateaus are the store houses of mineral reserves so here you can find the minerals all the type of minerals you can find it is the store house okay so here minerals are stored so it is a, known as the store house of mineral reserves the plateau of france the deccan plateau of india western australian plateau and brazilian plateau are very good sources of minerals so these are the good sources of minerals here you can find plenty of minerals iron copper gold diamond manganese coal etc are found in them so these all minerals are found there the chota nagpur plateau in india has deposits of coal manganese bauxite and limestone so the, uh, the chota nagpur plateau that is in india okay what you can find there coal you can find manganese bauxite and limestone type of minerals you can find there the rich black soil provides fertile land so black soil you can say it is the most fertile soil for agriculture in the deccan plateau there we can do agriculturing the waterfalls in these regions are ideal for hydel power generation to generate electricity also and there is you can say plenty of water in this plateau and so that's why agriculturing is possible there so that's why the land is fertile now plains a stretch of low land which could be level of or undulating and which has a low elevation above sea level is called a plain so here you can say but see the picture is there okay it is a stretch of low land low land means the land surface which could be level or undulating undulating gently rolling okay you can see that it is nearly uh, means little bit you can say it is elevated part okay means a little it is uh, you can say low elevation is there okay it is not too much high from the sea level and that is known as a plain they are suitable for agriculture as they are very fertile and have been the seeds of civilizations seeds means they are highly developed okay many civilizations have developed in these plain areas from ancient times especially the one next to rivers like the harappan civilization okay so the uh, the civilization that is uh, the harappan civilization that is next to the river harapp okay so the like these many civilizations have developed there next to the river indus this harappan civilization was next to the river indus and the egyptian civilization next to the river nile so these type of civilizations you can say they have been developed in this plain areas okay so the they are basically three types of plains okay so we are having three types of plains that is the first is depositional plains flood plains okay in depositional plains we are reading about flood plains they are the low lying areas near a river which get flooded when there is high flow okay so these flood plains they are low lying areas means that they are near the you can see here the sea level okay these areas are near the sea level okay and near a uh, near a river which get flooded these are near a river also they get flooded when there is high flow okay when the water flow is very high so these rivers they get flooded when the water recedes means when it go back the water when it go back the alluvial deposit left behind form the flood plain so when the water goes back okay the you can say the deposits which the water is bringing with it that are left behind and the water goes back okay these are very fertile so these deposits these alluvials are very 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 fertile okay and they are good for agriculturing for example the indo gangetic plain in india okay that, that is flood plain that is deltic uh, deltaic plain these are formed at the mouth of the river okay means at the mouth of the river they are formed when the river deposits the sediments in it it is carrying 
when the sediments are deposited at the mouth of the river the water is carrying the sediments which are rich in alluvium okay for example sundarbans in india then coastal plain in the coastal regions coastal regions is the region that is uh, means where you can see the water is there and the uh, water part or you can say the border is attaching with the uh, land okay so that coastal plains in the coastal regions the wind and the waves blow uh, the sand and carry the material from the beach and deposit them further inland to form new plains okay so what happens when in these regions the winds and the waves when they blow or you can say the waves when they come they uh, they carry the material that is present in the sand or that is present at the beach okay they carry it and they deposit them in further inland inland is the area which is known coastal okay where there is no water so they deposit that in that area to form the plains and example is eastern and western coastal plains of india then is glacial plains when the glacier melts okay when the glacier it melts it flows down depositing the material that it carries then when it melts the water it flows downwards okay and it is carrying the material also with it like sand and gravel gravel are pebbles okay so it is carrying these materials to form glacial plains for example plains of northwestern eurasia then it is lava plain these are formed by the accumulation of lava after a volcanic eruption when lava is collected after the volcanic eruption okay so these plains are formed due to that for example the deccan plateau in india when the lava comes down okay when the lava is collected and when it cools down and the plains are formed then loess plain these are formed by the wind which carries fine particles of loess what is loess a loosely compacted yellowish gray deposit okay of wind blown sediments when wind is blowing with the wind the sediments are coming so that is loess okay so it, these plains are formed when fine particles of loess from the deserts and other barren regions barren are infertile regions okay so when barren regions and deposits them okay so there these all the materials it get deposited there for example the wongo in china clear so what are the uh, three types of plains are there okay one we have done so remaining two will do in next video so till then be safe and revise till the here Have a nice day. Goodbye.